Uh, hello, everyone. Um, uh, I'm, uh, I'm, this is a talk on sort of the history of Drupal, the development over uh, all 15 versions of uh, Drupal, sort of a high-level overflow, so overview of everything. So um, sort of where things happened and things like that. This text here was actually from the first version of uh, Drupal 1. Um, and how they were promoting Drupal. So, uh, I'm Gordon Hayden. Uh, I've been um, developing with Drupal since 2001, uh, core contributor, contributed modules. Uh, I've been maintaining the e-commerce site, uh, e-commerce module, when that started in about 4.3. Um, contrib contributions to that, and then I took it over. Um, as well as a whole heap of other other um, modules and contributions to that. I also organised uh, the very first Drupal meetup in Australia, or actually the Southern Hemisphere, um, in that. So, so you guys having a good DrupalCon? Enjoying it? Or do I have to go on to my alternative slides that say uh, how to be excited about DrupalCon? So yeah, so this was where we sort of where we started the 22nd of April 2006 in, in a uh, small um, small cafe in uh, Smith Street in Melbourne. So there was the seven of us. Um, there is uh, Simon Hobbs and Jeremy es Espin. They're still around here as well. So it's it's sort of been a long time coming, and we're just so pleased that. We've finally got DrupalCon down under, so, so it's really good. Now, we started off with, uh, we got Drupal 1 was the first release. It was released, uh, when was it? Uh, the 15th of January 2001, in that. And as you can see from the logo at the top, not branded as Drupal. So, we had things like the current module system that we've currently gotten in uh, right through to Drupal 7. It's been added to, but it's pretty much stayed the same. So, so basically, the module invoke, module invoke all. I actually, I don't think module invoke all was there, but so it sort of st stood up right from the start. So really good. Few bad things. Registered globals, we had them enabled. Now you know on PHP you do registered globals. Anything that is posted, any variables that are posted or put onto the get string automatically come into PHP as variables. So very bad, and that was how we did things at the very beginning. Uh, our basic theme engine was very basic, and it was based on uh, based on objects. So it was just an object with the theme page in it. Uh, to how you to print the header, how you did did the footer, very simplistic. We also used, now one of the, one of the big arguments that's always sort of come through um, is that why isn't Drupal using first class objects? Well actually we did, right from the start, we were using first class objects. So content, user, everything done that way. There was lots of hard coded HTML, real bad stuff, it was quite ugly. And also, like PHP, we use the short tags for PHP, so uh, to invoke it. And another thing was that we had now actually so a lot of uh, WordPress still does that. It still has a uh, start, open, and close tags. We got rid of the close tags a while ago. So these are the statistics. This is all done with PHP like. So yeah, as you can see, 49 files and only 6,300 lines of code. So, fairly small, but did quite a lot. So, we'll do a quick demo of Drupal 1. So, that's there, there. Oh. Weather. Okay, so here is Drupal 1 after you installed it. So, the home page. There and so you could then create content. So we'll create a little, we'll we'll submit a submit some news. 
So submitting a story, same as what you do now. So test, so you got your teaser and your extended story. And then you'd say which category you would put into it. Same as before, previewing the previewing it. So this is all pretty much hard code. You don't have much control over what you do. So once you've done this, you can then submit your submission. Okay. Thank you for submitting. Most of the content didn't actually show up. You had to actually administer it, uh, do it through the administration. So you had your submission queue there. So you would, so people had to go into the admin system. And then we'd put, okay, there's the story. There, we could edit it and then publish it to the front page. I'll just go back down. So post it story and save it. Now the other fun thing was that there was actually no direct link that I could find to get back to the main site other than changing the URL. So, so there was the posted announcement. So that was Drupal 1. I actually had that running, managed to get that running. That was a little bit of an effort to get running. So I actually had to hack it a little bit and get rid of pesky things like checking that passwords were correct. So version 2, still no Drupal. It's still drop.org um, there. So version 2 was uh, was the 15th of March. So it's only, what was it? 59 days later, three months later, we had version two. And this is where we got the T function. So, so right from version two, we started to get the basics of our, of our translation system. The user permission screen, that came in in version two as well. Before that, it was pretty much hard coded. Did a bit of uh, source cleanup. And we changed everything to long tags. So a little bit more there. Okay, as you can see, it was only a small update, so we had about a 14% increase in code and, so, and uh, files and size, so it did increase a little bit. As you can see from here, it's pretty much the same as what we had in, in um, one. It didn't change a lot, so we'll probably just skip over this demo since we've got a lot to go through. Drupal 3, we got the node system. Now, this is, we still have this today. A little bit more complex than what we had, but we got the node system. So this is, when was it? 15th of August, 2001, we had the node system Im implemented within Drupal. So, uh, and that there's, hasn't, we've added a lot of stuff to it, but the basic principles of the node system haven't changed much, right through to 7. So getting the node system, because like as you know with Drupal 6 and 7, you can add your contents as you want and things. All your content types were hard coded in there. So we had things like the, um, the blog module, the page module, the forum module, and the book module, which were all basically different types of nodes. And the other thing that we got was we got caching of uh, uh, we got caching support. hasn't changed a lot. We able to do some more with it, but the basic APIs have stayed the same, which is really good. As you can see, also from the top there, the logo, we're sort of getting more and more towards our, what our current logo looks like. So as you can see. We actually increased, because like the node system went in, Drupal doubled in size. So we got about 71 files and 12,000 lines of code. So it was getting bigger all the time. The, so this is Drupal 3. We'll pop over, over to that. There 
goes. Okay, so Drupal 3, similar things. So we also had things like submissions built, baked in. There was actually some basic rating systems, things like that. So we could actually then go and add content. So um, so if we add, add a blog entry, I don't think I had anything else enabled. So a little bit tidier on the theme in that. So, so we could add these things in straight away. So same restriction on the preview. So didn't have a lot of, lot of, uh, and we still had to submit things. So we were getting better. So then we had our submission queue. Actually, this one got submitted straight away. Don't think it would have appeared on the home page. So administering, still the same deal. as a sort of more of a complete system uh, by itself. So uh, so we had the content, content option, which said there, and then all the different parts of a node were different um, edit options, were through different pages. So you sort of did everything in micro formats instead of loading them in. Uh, so we could promote this to the front page. So, so when that saves, as soon as you do that, it allowed us to sort of get, and also we had a link back to the home page, which actually made things a little bit nicer. So, uh, okay. Okay, then we got Drupal 4. So this is sort of the thing. As you can see from the top, we became branded as Drupal from now on. So our default theme said we were Drupal, which was good, instead of being drop.org, which... Uh, so it took a bit of time for them to get that, but they got there in the end. We had the taxonomy module. Just about everyone uses the taxonomy module. It, it's changed a little bit, but it's pretty much stayed the same from when it was implemented. So it stood the test of time for us. Caching of pages, so being able to scale sites was starting to become more important to us and being able to increase what we could do with the throughput of the sites and that. We got the update system, so the update.php, but at this stage it only worked with core. Contributed modules at that stage, we had to write our own update system and most people wrote, had, had sort of hacked up versions of update.php in their directories. We were able to enable and disable modules via the, via the uh, admin system. Made things a little bit easier to, to maintain. We also started getting valid XHTML, which another improvement. And we also got gained support via the peer, peer database layers. We were able to load these things up with, uh, for PGSQL. So we had multiple systems that we could handle. And all of the first class objects got removed, so we had nothing. The only thing that was left was there was six, six objects left in the system, and most of those were to do with um, the RPC system, and the last couple were for themes. Themes, we still had our basic object rendering system, which was pretty rubbish. So as you can see, we sort of increased half again. So we're starting to get bigger, more, uh, more sophisticated. A few things in there. Okay, so, and as you can see, it doesn't uh, it doesn't like Safari, the uh, the browser Safari. So we'll, we'll down there. go back. Uh, F one. 
Okay, so we're up to Drupal 4. So it gave us a little bit more. So, if I, so sim, similar feel in that with, with the, how you did things. So we could, uh, creating a story, very similar. So we also started to get a bit more control when we did the story as well. So, and also one of the things that they were talking about in the, in the twig ones was how they were going to lay out, lay out our theme, the node entry in two columns. Four, we already had it. <laughs> so we went away from that. So so default, defaults were, um, so we could make changes as, as was sort of done from there on. So we can move things around a lot of our stuff. Still forced to do the preview. There's probably a setting for that, but uh, so this was uh, so sort of as the node system was starting to mature and things. So yep, as you can see, we've got our new new story there, and everything's there. Still with the, um, no, that was yesterday. still the very bland and uh, very minimal administration system, um, which wasn't terribly important, but it was something that we had to deal with. Okay. So 4.1 was a bit of a maintenance release. They, we rewrote some big chunks of code. Now we, like, what was it? It's like, so 231 days that it took to sort of get this one out. We got the Marvin theme, so new iteration of the themes again, so changes as we were evolving in that. So as you can see with our logo, the logo is pretty much what we have today. It's sort of there. So it's been a while since we've had this logo and it's pretty much stayed the same for quite a while. Probably shined up a bit and made it a little bit better, but there. Performance, we got the profile module, we got the throttle module. Now the throttle module's been removed in, in 7, so the, one of the ideas behind the performance was as your site gets busier, let's just remove some features and then, and then let it handle things better. We got pager support. So being able to go through next, next, next on the page was really good. Another thing that we got was remote authentication that you could, so you could implement. It's something that we have now, which is really good for when you're implementing into companies that already have um, an authentication system. It means that we can actually just say, okay, no, we don't, we're not going to authenticate, make you have your, a new set of passwords and that we can communicate with your current system, which makes things a little bit better. So yeah, as you can see from the line number and that, didn't really grow a lot. There are some versions that grew and some versions that didn't. So, so as you can see from the theme there, uh, with the change, we sort of ended up with a bit of a cleaner theme. Still tables based, which uh, it wasn't until much later that we got these things. Four point two. Now this is where th things start. At some of the beginnings of things. Now this was a hook that I contributed. Um, it was actually probably well when I sort of consider it, it's the start of one of the biggest hooks that it, that is used within Drupal. Sort of help start a movement. Um, hook text area was when we were able to start putting. The, the WYSIWYG editors into Drupal. Didn't work very well, it was a little bit hackish. Um, it was allowed us to attach them to each, each thing. This was on the old form system too, which basically you would call the functions and it would spit out pure HTML instead of like the current form API that we've got. 
we got clean URLs, made things a lot nicer, enables us to do some really nice things to uh, make our sites better SEO-wise. We got the X template theme. Now, so this was actually, we still had the old version of uh, our theming engine, so all object-based in that, but uh, then we got the X template theme, which was a new method of templating files. It was sort of all in one file and a little bit horrid, but it was a step up from what we had originally. It was sort of more the, of a template mentality. We gained a, a new admin theme, so it actually started to look a bit nicer. Okay, so as you can see, not much of a change. So stats pretty much stayed the same. Okay, so I will pop over over to this guy here. Uh, okay, we're up to... So, so this is here. No, it's actually quite a clean theme, in, even though it is table-based and stuff. So... So we've got the, uh, so pretty much the similar thing. Some of the terms are starting to come in, like uh, editing your account and things. So the way the story is, as you can see, it, it's changed around. So we've got all the publishing options up the top. And then we start. We start putting in the content. Now, one of the, as you'll notice, too, we've no longer got an abstract or the teaser. Um, so it actually created that on the fly for us. And by default, we were able to submit. So, so some refinements of the permission system and what we can do as administrators, since I'm user one still, so. Did I? So. Same, we're not viewing this, the page on there. And as you can see from here, the... the in the administration... Oh, the VM slow. We've got the new, new look there. So it actually is sort of set out nice, a lot nicer and things. So a little bit easier to deal with, but still not brilliant. Okay, 4.3, registered globals we turned off. That made life a lot easier, a uh, little, a lot more secure for us, so being able to do, handle these things. Configurable URLs for, uh, for menus, so we could start actually overriding with uh, a path auto and things like that. We changed the theming system and now covers the admin section as well. So the whole, whole, whole of Drupal could actually be themed. Database prefixing. Don't know how many people used it, but it helped with um, a lot of the um, shared, uh, shared hosting services. It means we could actually use one database and ma have many sites on it, which was quite good. Multiple users were able to log in an anonymous session, so we had a little bit more power. So this is sort of where we were able to get uh, some of these things in um, uh, for e-commerce and things like that. It helped us do things. Uh, not many changes there on the uh, uh, code-wise with the stats. And we're pretty much still using the same theme. So the, basically, what was it? The Marvin theme. So... Um, probably with a few small tweaks and that, but it was starting to get a bit nicer. 4.4. Now, this was something that, was, that I remembered, because I actually had a look at my first post that I posted to Drupal, was basically, um, why can't anonymous users view my content? It took about four versions before they had set that as default. So when you install Drupal, Anonymous users could access content. So that was actually quite, uh, qu 
quite good. It made things that little bit easier. The theme system was rewritten. Now this is the, what we've currently got today right through to Drupal 7. So we've got all the theme functions. Didn't have the templates at that stage. At this, that's this stage, we were still using, uh, still using, didn't have PHP template at this stage. So as we got, we got the um, X template engine. So it was a single HTML file which had blocks in it, very horrible to work with, very horrible to make different methods of accessing these things. We also got the Blue Marine theme. So that hung around for quite a while. Um, and it managed to get in there. Also, we started doing some performance and, um, enhancements. Our, my, up until this stage, everything had been called through common.inc was included. 4.4, we got the bootstrap.inc, so we had a reduced footprint when we were loading the system up. So we didn't have to boot everything up all at once just to get going. So performance was starting, starting to work towards us. Customizable 404 pages made things a lot nicer. And we also started to get some basic functionality to work with files. Uh, before this point, there was basically one module to allow you to do files, and which was the uh, file store module. I can't remember if I'd released the, the second one, but the original one was written, and we were um, uh, we were URL encoding the file and saving it to the database as a blob. So it was yuck. So as you can see, it's sort of a little bit more of an incremental update. So here's Drupal 4.4. Uh, we will... Okay, uh, four point, is that one there? Two, three. Okay, so here it is here. I'm not gonna create content. It's pretty much the same as what we had before. So, so actually we started getting the, uh, the option. So a single create content link, followed by a list of all the content. Same as what we've got now. So when you're adding, so page stories. So if I just add a story, I won't post one, it's, it's a bit repetitive. So, so, and also with the menu system, we were able to do things like this too. So this is where one of the enhancements were from. So, so as you can see here from the, it starts, it's pretty much similar to what we've got, but most of the, attributes were above the, the fold, above the content itself. One of the big changes I think happened in five or six somewhere. Then with, uh, so then we've got the administration, uh, administer section, same theme, goes straight across the whole lot. Um, unfortunately, it did make things hard because some, especially with some of the more complex themes, it meant that we were uh, working that you had to make the theme work for in your admin sections and what. And at this stage, you couldn't really switch themes on the fly, so admin th having an admin theme wasn't really possible. So, so I'll just. So similar configuration options that we had. So it's just just like that. Single pages with sort of everything. Starting to get a little bit nicer in administering, but still not very good. Uh, Drupal was still very extensible, and this is sort of where a lot of people, uh, a lot of the more experienced people started to come in. Okay. Okay. This is where we started getting things like a full blown, a proper menu system, which really helped. The menu system before was built and wasn't even stored to the database. We were able to do some nice things. 
uh, better things with the menus and that. We actually now got um, one of the things that we can do is we've all, uh, since 4.5 we've had pluggable theme engines. So there was actually at this stage like we still had X template, um, X template there, but we started getting other themes engines. Like this is actually where the PHP template um, engine, which we currently have in seven, this is where it became got loaded into the system. Um, but we had others too, like we had Smarty, uh, so you could actually run Smarty as your as your template engine, uh, as your theme engine, and do that. So they they were all there. Um, it was sort of just deciding the best way. We got the upload module so people could actually do um, do uploads of files and things like that. So that was starting to get a step. It was very basic and not very very well done. Proper PGSQL support. Um, being able to do multiple databases was was um, was something that we were always interested in, but uh, MySQL made it a lot. Uh, was, had very good support for uh, for uh, websites, nice and fast, but still it uh, a lot of people also wanted Progress SQL. We also started adding a lot um, of our documentation and everything. I'm not sure if the API site started then, but it's sort of one of the things why we why we started moving towards, so everything was more documented, better to work with. Um, sort of we increased by about a quarter between four and five, so it was quite not, uh, a sort of a, not a big jump, not a lot of major ones and uh, major changes. Okay. Um, so this is with five and the, uh, so this is 4.5. So it's close to the same, not huge changes, but we, it's, uh, it's nice. We'll go on to 4.6. The current uh, system that we've got for it's doing up multiple sites. So the site's default. So you can go to sites, foo.bar. All that, that came in in 4.6. Enabled us to do some nice things there. We started getting basic image handling being able to do some manipulation on images and started to get some nice digital asset stuff. Still very basic, but a lot better than what we had. 4.6 is where we've got PHP 5 support. So this, before then, every, nothing worked on 5 and it was all, 4 point, uh, all PHP 4. So, so again, Incremental release, few bugs, not, not a lot of really good innovation, but it was sort of starting to working towards where we, where we are today. As you can see, we're still using the Blue Marine theme, so not a lot has actually changed. Okay, 4.7 is probably where everything changed for Drupal. This is where we got the form API. Um, this was a massive change over what, and, and uh, because of uh, the um, because of this little thing, we started to get the mantra of "Don't hack core." So you could pretty much do anything without actually having to change core, which was something that no one had actually thought about before then. So this is where everything sort of started from. It got added to help with HTML editors and sort of grew a life of its own. We removed the X template engine and put in PHP template. Uh, so straight down to pure the template files, what we've got now, it made things a lot easier to build in that. So that was really good. Blue Marine was converted to PHP template, so so right from from as soon as we got it, we had this, even though we had the same theme, it was uh, an improve. It was still an improvement. Uh, so it was it was made into the better one. Still table based, and a little bit of CSS. We gained free tagging support in uh, the taxonomy module. So 
4.7 is really, really a game changer for us. The other thing is the upgrade system supports contributed modules. It made it so easy for, for you to update your entire site in one go, uh, which made things a lot, a lot nicer. It made things easier for the authors of contributed modules. And things like, we got elements like collapsible field sets. So we had a little bit of JavaScript in there as well. And the other thing that happened was we removed all the trailing um, PHP close tags. So it just goes to the end of the file. Uh, other CMSs, some of them still have it. We always have just the start at the top and one at the bottom. It sort of helps solve the, uh, uh, the session breaking problems that you get sometimes, which as long as you're not adding the bottom one, you should never get it. So as you can see now, we sort of pretty much, uh, yeah, we actually added a lot of code. So it was about 20% increase in code. So it was, it was a pretty big change. As you can see there with 4.7, we've still got the Blue Marine theme. Still looks pretty much the same as what the last couple of versions did. And we'll have a quick look at this one. Is that it? 4.6. 4.7. As you can see there, we actually also got, so we've got uh, creating content. So the same methodology. Oh, come on. So we've got the node add and things. A few other modules started coming along which enabled us to do uh, opening these things uh, without refreshing the page. Um, things like that, which made life a little bit easier and more fun. Okay, so... My virtual, engine, virtual machines must be getting a little bit tired. So, so we actually had some changes in what, how things work with um, in our layout. So this, at this point, with, with Drupal 7, we went in, uh, so every form within Drupal 7 was completely rewritten. So we changed around how things happened there. So, and because of the collapsible field sets that we gained, um, so, and remember, these were also, these were pre-jQuery too. So these were actually really quite ugly in how they were implemented. So, and because of hook form alter, we could start altering these forms by contributed module, adding fields that we wanted, and even removing fields or setting the access there. So that was actually quite a large that was actually a radical change. So and then the the administration area, pretty much the same thing again, um, which made life uh, which sort of helped us organize these things, but uh, still the same problems that we had, which was when you're theming a site, you have to theme the entire site. Okay, Drupal, uh, Drupal 5, uh, this was actually quite a, um, it was a significant change. We started working towards uh, cleaning it up and trying to stop being the ugly duckling. So we got configurable content types. So we could actually configure them on the fly. So a lot of modules actually disappeared. Um, we ended up adding more hook alters. So we we're starting to realize the power of, of hook form alter and deploying this across many more parts of the system. So it made it easier for us to, for 
modules outside the modules, even in contributed modules, to manipulate what these other modules were doing, which made things a lot easier. We got jQuery. And everyone knows jQuery is just fucking awesome. So it makes, makes life so much easier and you don't have to be a huge whiz to try and get through the problems of the issues with cross-browser compatibility. Remember at this stage, we still had problems with IE. IE is still a problem these days, but it's, you can pretty much get away with any standard stuff, which helps things. We got, we got changes for um, different caching engines. So in Drupal 5, we started getting things like um, we were able to cache into memcache. So we started looking towards performance a little bit more as well. So that made life a lot easier in that aspect. Drupal 5, actually, this is probably one of the biggest things that helped us. It was easier to install it. Up until this stage, we were actually, you were doing a uh, load of a MySQL dump file and loading it into, my, into your database. Now we were able to configure it right from the start. Profiles, which at this stage profiles didn't take off, are starting to get better these days and people are starting to implement, like we're getting some of the other systems that are, that are doing, creating their new profiles for the system to work and make it a lot better. We got the Garland theme. So this was sort of one of our attempts to actually make a, a nice theme that looked good. So when you're comparing things, especially between like Joomla at that stage and Drupal, Drupal was the ugly duckling, but Drupal had the much better APIs and, and programming standards. Sites all was started, was added, support was added. So we could start creating, even though we had more option for using multiple sites, we could put everything into sites all and use it across the board, which was made life a little bit easier and much nicer, especially if you were dealing with sites that had a lot of commonalities between them, if you were using the multiple sites. And these days, a lot of our standard practices is everything goes into sites all. So, bit of an increase in the code, um, which made life uh, starting to get a bit heavier and things, so that was quite good. So this is probably what you would call modern Drupal. So we'll go and have a quick look at this. Uh, oops. Oh, we're going across to it. Okay. So this is pretty much what Drupal was, what, what everyone sees Drupal as. Like six changed a bit, uh, but it's still, uh, it's still nice. Uh, it's still got a lot of similarities to five. A lot of work with six was done underneath the hood, so it was. Yeah. So this is why we all started also using things like our admin menu and things like that, so we could get around the site a lot faster. Okay, so read, read, read. Okay. Okay, so same things, a lot nicer theme which uh, which gave us a lot better. So we'd actually gone from B, from in um, Drupal in um, 4.7, which we had uh, Blue Marine, which was a table-based theme, to Garland in 5, which was a proper CSS theme. So your fluid layouts and things like that. Everything else was pretty much the same. as A uh, few improvements, things that make it nice. Is there anything else nice in here? Okay, so 
administration had changed a little bit, mainly in how things were laid out, but it was starting to. We also got things like uh, the status um, status report, so giving us a bit of a health check on, on the site and what things needed to be done. We actually also got, instead of uh, in 4.7, uh, and before we were getting the watchdog whenever we went in here. Now we were sort of getting more feedback on what was happening. Uh, okay. Okay. Drupal 6. Now this was actually a fairly significant one. So this actually took over a year to develop. Um, so this was probably starting to become one of our, starting the, where we were getting our longer development cycles. Um, so we got the batch API. This was really good for doing long running processes. Like VBO was, in a, was able to do that. Uh, it meant that in, um, it was taken out of the uh, update PHP. So that was sort of split off into its own area so we could do it. And doing batching off forms was just so easy it wasn't funny. It was really nice. Form API had been rewritten a little bit and it made things a bit nice. Um, we got some improvements there. Schema API was added, so we were starting to also work towards a not being tied directly to MySQL. So we could, it meant for developers that when we released, when we created our module, we didn't have to create a MySQL and a PGSQL version of the, of the templates. It just worked in both. That was the theory anyway. You sort of had to make sure that USQL was very generic so that it would work in both, or, but otherwise you were sort of working out which was what and splitting if you needed to. We got support for reverse proxies, again, improving performance, continuing this on. Um, in 6, we got um, PressFlow. So any work with 6 sort of became, if you were doing any performance work, you used PressFlow. Drupal 6 just wouldn't cut it, but we got it, which helped with 7. 6, we got Dru the, the hook uh, Drupal Alter. It sort of made, created a single API for, for adding hook alters to anywhere on the system. So easily add them one line, in your code here and there, all of a sudden you had a hook alter. You had a you had a hook alter in your code, so people could start dealing with what you were doing. We actually also started to get a little bit more security conscious here. PHP filter was moved into its own module, so you could actually run your site without having PHP filter enabled, which made a lot of uh, made things work a little bit better. A lot of people, like even myself we sort of re-enable these things sometimes just to do some some of the mucky work. Modules, so in 6 there was a big changes to the template, so actually we were able to put templates into modules. So this made things a lot nicer, means that we could do it. Sort of wasn't being able to do um, the dream that I was wanting, which, which was basically everything is templates. Get rid of, getting getting rid of these things, sort of making it easier for themers to, to use the system. We were able to, Hulk Watchdog was added, so, so, because this was a big performance issue. The DB Watchlog, most people get told that one of the first things you do is you disable the DB log, just because it hits the database too often. Syslog came with, with the system as well as the DB log, and which gave us a lot of um, which meant that we could log the, all these things that were getting logged really quickly and it, we could spin this stuff off to wherever and it meant that adding your own logging system for within, within your organization was good. You could just queue them up, send them across to, the, to another system and go for it. Also, there was a huge cleanup in 6. This is where we got being able to run PHP with just e -all. so any error would get displayed to the screen. So one of the things you should be doing these days whenever you're developing in Drupal is have e all set and display errors. If you're getting warnings or anything like that, you should be fixing them. So another thing that came in Drupal 6 was being able to run Drupal from a shell. 
It was very basic, and at the stage uh, when it was written, it was more designed so that we could run cron from, from a shell instead of through, through the web browser, which made things a lot better. So that actually really helped. It's also sort of where um, utilities like Drush came from. So once we'd sort of gotten over this initial step of bootstrapping Drupal and doing that, we then started getting Drush. And everyone should be using Drush. Uh, so it sort of should be pretty much your primary toolkit. So as you can see, we sort of start, even though we're getting bigger, we're sort of increasing in size. As you can see, like 67,000 lines of code. So Drupal's getting bigger. Uh, more files. Now, a lot of the increase in the files there, like 51% more files, was actually from templates. So we could add in templates and and make it easier to style and things like that. Okay, so Drupal 6, most people here have probably seen it, so I'm not going to demo it. It's, uh, it's still out there, and a lot of people are still using it, mainly because the upgrade path to 7 is so hard. <laughs> okay, 7. 7 was a huge release. As you can see there, what is it? 1,057 days between 6.0 and 7.0. That was a gigantic effort and a lot of work. But in the end, um, I think it's worth it. It really has made things a lot nicer, and we're getting there. Fields API. So no more CCK, which was... It was nice, but it was only on nodes. We didn't want it on nodes. We wanted to be able to put fields on anything. So getting that was good. System testing. So this is where we started getting. Now, unfortunately, these were end-to-end -end tests. We can't actually split these things up and do unit tests properly. Um, and there's, I think there is a couple in 7, but it's all pretty much end-to-end -end testing, running the whole system to make it work. We got dbtng. So from, from a lot of the early stuff that we had, uh, a, lot of the, um, a lot of the hacks was from, for, that people would have was always from SQL injections. If you're doing this right, you should never have an SQL injection. Pretty much we've gotten rid of the majority of that anyway because most data that was coming into the system is now being filtered out properly and things like that. So it makes life a little easier. Pluggable password system. So we can actually, if you don't like how the internal system is hashed, we can actually change that now. So it makes it a lot, a lot nicer. We also got um, salted passwords, so which, which is actually really good from a security point of view. But if you're trying to hack a site where you've forgotten the password, you can't just go to an MD5 rainbow table and look up your password. So. We got a lot of use of first class objects. So a Drupal 7 became a lot more object orientated. It made, uh, enabled us to do some things. Um, objects are good for doing some heavy lift, lifting and stuff. It makes life easier. So, and as far as I know, I didn't get a chance to look it up. Node and user and a lot of uh, the old objects, still standard class. So not, still, not, still haven't returned to first class objects. We got the Q API. Now, probably not many people see this, but it's used by the aggregator, so your cron doesn't time out. It just starts running in the background. Really quite cool what we can do. Actually, with, um, with that, there's, a, there's some plugins. Because it's a pluggable system, we're starting to think more pluggable of things. Uh, we can actually replace the Q system with other systems such as Beanstalk. Now, the Beanstalk system that's in Drupal is actually running all of the git commits on Drupal.org. So every time you do a push to Drupal.org, it goes through the Drupal queuing system and does all the processing and all the background stuff that we do now so that we can see all this information on Drupal.org. And also, we got lazy loading of classes. So this meant that when we're, this meant for us that 
We didn't have to load up everything to start up. We did try to implement uh, lazy loading of functions, but that kind of caused a lot of problems. Now, this was a huge upgrade, so it got very big. So what's that? 65% increase in the number of lines of code and 50% increase in the number of files. It, it got a lot bigger. Some people even say that uh, like seven is still slower than six, six uh, but it is getting there and if you configure up your caches right and stuff like that, the, your, your changes for doing these things, for speeding things up and being able to scale uh, is just quite phenomenal. So that's pretty much up to now. And this is all the good stuff that's coming, hopefully next year. So one of the biggest changes is with the subsystem. We're getting Symfony. Um, a lot of the Symfony components are being dragged in. We can actually use these. So like the um, HTTP kernel, which objects, the found HTTP foundation, uh, a lot of that stuff we can use. We can also use anything that's standard files. So we can we can drag it in. So who saw the uh, Symphony um, uh, the Symphony demo yesterday? I think it was. Uh, not so much, they were talking about a lot of the objects in that. Yeah, uh, not the Twig one, the other one. So that one there was it was basically Drupal can bring in things from outside. So we can start getting rid of the not made here mentality, which made things a little bit better. We got the Twig theme engine. If anyone's taken a look at this, this is cool. And it's really, really fast. Uh, it gets a lot faster and things like that. Greater use of objects. So we're using a lot more first class objects to do things. So it makes things really good. Uh, PSR zero compliance. So pretty much it means that we can take um, things like Twig and Symphony and Doctrine and all that and put it into Drupal and make use of it and it won't conflict with what we're using in there. So it makes use of namespaces. We're able to use all the latest things that PHP 5.3 gives us, which is really good. The other thing is um, removal of all the themes. So what's going to happen at 8 is everything is a template which is brilliant. It makes its life so much easier. Not only have we got a very good theming engine in with Twig, we've got a really good, it, it means that um, themers can just, just grab templates and alter them as needed and everything's a template. They don't have to understand code or copy things. It makes it really good. One of the last things that I didn't get in here, views and core. That is awesome. It means that basically the implications of having views in core. Now, when did people start using seven? Well, actually, when did people start using six? It was when views and CCK were upgraded to six and released. When did people start using seven? When views was released. So when are they going to start using eight? Well, the day it's released because views is in it. We can do everything there. So you can pretty much build a brand new site right from scratch using views and you've got you should have 90 percent of the tools that you'll need will be in core i uh, think the date modules going in which is probably one of the last things that we'll need we've got some really nice entity reference tools in there so that's going to make things so much better and be really quite neat so i'm really excited about seven especially with the rest stuff it's all built in there and because of the new menu router we can just we don't actually have to build all of Drupal to do things. In 6 and 7, uh, like for doing REST calls for uh, application, external applications and that, we would build up all the themes and everything. It was, a real, um, it was a real push model. So we would build up all the blocks. We would build everything up. And then when we'd come to Dru creating the XML or the JSON on the page, we throw everything away and hand it out to them. So we did a lot of work for no reason. Because of the uh, router in 8, we can just say, oh, this is a REST call. Well, I don't need to build the blocks. I don't need all this stuff. All I need to do is just spit out this chunk of XML. 15 versions of Drupal in, in an hour. <laughs> I was hoping that I wouldn't go too far over. So yeah, so 
Um, thank you very much for your time. Do you have any? Um, probably may have a few minutes if anyone's got any quick questions. Um, we just got the question, when will it be perfect? <laughs> well, I don't know. Drupal 8 is getting very close, maybe 9 or 10. Yeah, yeah, um, it's sort of a bit hard. I know that around 4.7 we got um, uh, who, what, the, uh, the Onion. So it meant that if you did a search on Google for, for The, you got The Onion, so it was at the top of the list. So, and then 6 and 7, sort of like where like um, whitehouse.gov came in. Um, seven, a lot of big sites came in, like uh, uh, Now Public and things like that. So, I don't know of too many back before that. Probably, um, what, probably the the uh, the oldest uh, Drupal developer, the most experienced Drupal developer in Australia, which is um, Simon Lindsay. He's actually got a he's got a site, one of his sites, which I would say it was very early fours. And he's still running, and I think he's upgraded it right through to seven. So uh, my site, I think, started at about 4.5 and went all the way, and it's yeah, it's on seven now. So okay, yeah, thank you very much. <laughs>